Good morning. Good morning. morning. Alright. It's indeed a blessing uh, again to stand before you to proclaim the word of God again this morning. I pray that God says something through me that helps us in our day, in our walk, in our uh, on our daily occupations. I'll go to good work today, I think. And I hope you think so too. Um, coming from Daniel 3, very familiar stories. But I don't want the familiarity of the story to make you or help you or cause you to miss what God really wants us to hear in relation to life. I love preaching on life because uh, the reality is, um, I have to say, I'm not patenting it yet, so y'all don't steal it from it, but life is going to happen whether you want it to or not. Yeah. It's your reaction to life when it happens is what counts. Okay. I haven't patented that yet, so y'all don't take it from me. <laughs> but life is going to happen. I tell people all the time, well, you know, people say, well, you know, I just got this going on. I say, we well, all got stuff going on. I say, you're not the only one that has stuff going on. But I say, life is going to happen whether you want it to or not. But it's your reaction to what's going on is what God really honors. <clears throat> So even when you're going through, through pain, suffering, when you're going through this, when you're going through that, listen, you're not by yourself. You're just honest enough to be able to be vulnerable enough to let somebody know I'm dealing with some stuff. And a lot of us hide what we're going through and hide what we're dealing with and hide our feelings and hide our emotions. Listen, we're emotional people. My brother and I had this conversation one day. He said, you know, bro, we're just emotional. That's who we are. That's who God created us to be. We're emotional. And that's okay. However, don't allow your emotions to affect your walk with Christ. Because sometimes we will allow our emotions to take over our faith. Because you can't be emotional and faithful at the same time. Our emotions are going to come up. Yes. But they cannot rule you. Listen, in this story today, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, y'all know him. I heard somebody say, Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad billy goat. <laughs> but listen, these boys had a reason to somewhat be emotional and then let those emotions take the place of the one that they served. They had a reason simply because they were faced with death. Now, let me let you know something about death. Death does not necessarily come with us dying physically. Listen, we're always talking about death, but death can come in so many different ways. Death in your finances, death in your relationships, death in the job that you're on, death in whatever it is. Listen, death does not always manifest itself physically. But when we think of death, we think, oh, I'm about to leave this place. No. Death comes in so many different ways. It's just not a physical death that we experience a lot of times. We experience death on so many different levels. And when we, come, when we have a, a one-sided view of things, that's all we see. But I want to let you know that even in the face of death, there's still hope. There's still joy. There's still peace. There's still understanding. Listen, there's still love even in the face of death. Oh, yeah. Whatever that situation may be. I want to read this to you today. I, I don't want to start at the beginning because you know the beginning. Uh, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, he was just a ruler, uh, ruthless ruler. He, he built this uh, big statue. He wanted people to, um, every time the, the trumpets and the leers and all of these instruments played, he said, I want y'all to bow before this, this, this statue that I created. Now watch this. It's a statue that he created. It was not something that God created. So he told them to all the people, when, this, when everything, uh, when these uh, instruments play, you're going to bow before this statue that I created. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had another plan. They said to themselves, listen, and after, after uh, Nebuchadnezzar made this decree, and you know, they, 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 the decrees were basically announcements. They made an announcement simply saying that when these instruments play, you will bow. 
And if you don't, we're going to throw you or you're going to face death. <laughs> That's basically what Nebuchadnezzar was saying. If you don't do as I instruct you to do, you will face death. But look what Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says. In verse 15, he says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reply to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. He says, if we are thrown in the blazing furnace, he says, the God we serve is able to deliver us. He says, De deliver us from it, and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. Let me go back and read that again, because I want you to catch the wording that they use. They said, if we, by chance, if it just happens to happen, if we are thrown into the fiery furnace, into the blazing furnace, says the God we serve is. I want you to let you know about that, that word is. Is is not probably. It doesn't uh, uh, ring a sound of doubt because it says he is. They didn't say he might be. They didn't say he may. They didn't say he probably will. They say he is able. Do you know that God is able? I, I want you to, and, and to encourage you this morning that God is able. No matter what you are facing, I opened up with that this morning simply because I want you to understand that no matter what you're going through in your life, no matter what you're facing, God is Don't put a word in there that, that, will, that will ring a sound of doubt. They didn't say God may save us. He said he is able. They didn't say he was probably able. They said he is able. That says a lot to me. Because, you know, we, we all deal with things, but I know that God is. He is able. Listen, they, are, they didn't stop there. They said he is able to deliver us from, from it. But it goes on to say, he will. Somebody say, he will. he will. Listen, you don't understand how the wording in these words, in these verses, really tap into the faith that you really have on the inside of you. They said, he is able, and he will deliver. They, they understood that no matter what, I'm not going to do what you say, because I serve a God that is and that will. They say to themselves, Nebuchadnezzar, and I want you to say to your enemy, I want you to say to those people that are, that are talking and lying on your name and doing this and doing that and trying to, uh, I got some folks on my job right now saying something about folks so they can uh, step on them and get to that next level. It's okay because I serve a God that is and that will. I may be sick in my body, but it's okay because I serve a God that is and that will. I don't mean to shout, but I get excited for God. He just confirms things to me. I get real excited because I know that no matter what God is, and he will. These boys said, listen, we don't care what you do. We serve a God that is a and that will deliver. Listen, they were literally telling Nebuchadnezzar, dude, you can't do nothing to us. That's what they were saying. They were telling sickness, sickness, you can't do nothing with us. You know why? Because God is. And he will. But how does is and will become effective in your life when you believe that he is? And you believe that he will. Listen to me, I tell you what, nothing will manifest in your life if your mind don't allow you to believe it. Let me, let me say that my uncle told me to say that one more time. Nothing will manifest positively in your life if your mind does not allow you to believe that he is and that he will. God is. My mom used to sing a song. Yeah, this is my mom right here, y'all. <laughs> my mom used to sing a song when I was uh, just started, started to play. 
I think I was about 10, when I started to play for the church. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's been a long time. I'm 37 now. It's been a long time. But God, my mom used to sing a song that God is my all and all. It says God is the joy and the strength of my life. Listen, it didn't stop there. He says he moves all pain, misery, and strife. The song simply goes on to say he promised to keep me. He promised to never leave me. Never, never come short of his word. It says, I got to fast and pray and stay in the now. What is the narrow way? When David penned the, 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 the song, uh, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley, that was a narrow way. Do you understand? Valley is coming to a narrow place. They don't come down into wide places. They come down into narrow places. And he says, fast and pray and stay in the narrow way. He said, don't, 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 don't veer off. Well, the song says, God is. So you can put whatever you want to put in there. God is my food when I'm hungry. God is my water when I'm thirsty. God is my peace when all hell is breaking loose around me. You can put what you want to put in there. These bars put in there say, God is able to deliver us from it. God will. They were almost picking at Nebuchadnezzar. I would have felt some kind of way if I was Nebuchadnezzar. Because you're telling me what God is going to do. And God is able to do after I told you what I'm going to do if you don't do what I told you to do. But they didn't worry about that. Because they understood that no matter what Nebuchadnezzar did, God is. And God will. I love what happened when Nebuchadnezzar told him, the, the, the King James Version, I love this word, he says, his countenance changed. I love that word. They, said, they could have just said, well, his facial expression changed. They could have said that, but I love the way they put it. They said, his countenance changed. What does that mean? When, you, when, 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 when people want you to be who they want you to be, and, they're, and you don't live up to what they want you to be, their countenance changes. They don't feel the same way about you anymore. They don't look at you the same way. Why? Because you didn't do it the way they wanted you to do it. You didn't do it when they wanted you to do it. You didn't do it how they wanted you to do it. And their countenance changes. What did you do? You made them angry. They made Nebuchadnezzar angry. Why? Because they defied him to his face. When, when the enemy comes in you, you defy him to his face. When sickness comes to you, you defy it to his face. When pain comes to you, you defy it to his face. How do you do that? They said that God is. And God will. You got to believe it for it to, to manifest in your life. It will never manifest if your mind don't allow you to believe it. I remember uh, Too Short. Y'all remember Too Short? Too Short had this song in my mind playing tricks on it. Listen, too short says, you know, there, there are things going on in my mind that, 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 that look like something, but it really ain't that. It looks like sickness, but it really ain't sickness. It looks like death, but it really ain't death. It looks like, like, like pain, but it really ain't pain. It looks like lies, but it really ain't lies. What is it? Victory. Why? Because God is. And God will. Don't let your mind play tricks on you. Don't let the mind is something else. I'm telling y'all. And never could, our, our Shadrach, Meekin, Shaq, and Abednego could have allowed their mind to let them believe that they were going to die if they did not conform to what our Nebuchadnezzar wanted them to do. But look what happened. The Bible says his countenance changed. And when his countenance changed, the Bible says he got so mad that not only did he light the furnace, but he lit it seven times hotter than it was normally lit. That means he put a lot of wood on there. Hey, boys, I need y'all to come on up here. I need y'all to heat this thing up. I need you to heat it up real good. Now, you ever uh, uh, put a fire and you got real close to it, 
and you could just feel the heat off of it. I'm sure the, the heat was on him probably 10 times worse than that. But watch this. He didn't know what he was doing when he lit the furnace seven times hotter because that was a specific reason he did it seven times hotter than it usually was because you got to understand that number seven biblically simply means perfection. I love that. So what he was doing, he was creating a perfect atmosphere for God to do what he does best. Yes. He was creating a perfect atmosphere for God is and will. Mm. He was doing something he didn't realize he was doing. He was creating an atmosphere for God to say, here I am, boys. Right, yes. And this is what they did. They tied them up. You know, people try to bind you down. They said not only did they tie them up, but they tied them up with all of the clothes on. They didn't take nothing off of them. They, they bound them with their hands and their feet. So if you bound with your hands and your feet, you can't even walk. You can't even move. So what did they have to do? They had to tote them. Listen, I love this. Sometimes bound ain't a bad thing. Because when you're bound sometimes, people got to carry you to the place where you really got to be. Oh, my God. I love this. Simply because don't think of bound being bound as a bad thing all the time. Because if they had not been bound, they probably would have ran away. But he said they were bound, and the men had to take them to the place of their victory. Let your enemy told you to the place. It's okay for me. Save me some energy. So the Bible simply says, the Bible says, as the men that threw them in, they were consumed. Y'all yeah. missed that. Thing. I know. Let me go back. The Bible says, when they were bound, all of their clothes, hands and their feet, the men that threw them in, they were consumed. Yeah. So watch this. Those that are trying to uh, 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 take you to your demise, don't worry. Because God is able, yeah. and God will consume them yeah. instead of you. All right. And what God will do, he'll turn it around that you have to save them and not them save you. Right. So God is. I love this part right here. I know y'all heard the story before. But the Bible simply says when they throw them in, now watch this. They were thrown in. And I'm sure, you know, when you, when you toss a cat up in the air, nine times out of ten, what's going to happen? That cat going to land on his feet. Cat is that child. But they threw them in. And I'm sure they couldn't probably catch themselves as they were going down. However, a few minutes later, they look at them and say, come here. How many boys did we throw in there? So King, we threw three of them. But the Bible says Nebuchadnezzar had to look again. Now, let me tell y'all something about these glasses right here. These are life savers. You hear me? If I didn't have them, I couldn't see a thing. I'd be in a mess. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar had to put his glasses on. Because when he looked in the first time, he wasn't seeing correctly. Because he knew they threw three. But the Bible says he saw four. The men only threw three men in. But Nebuchadnezzar said he saw four men. He said, not only did we throw the three men, but I see four men. And they are up walking. Y'all are listening to me this morning. Now, now mind you, when they went in, they were what? They were bound. They ain't what I said. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says they were bound. They couldn't walk. They had to talk them to their victory. They had to take them to their demise, what they thought. But they taught them, they, they took them and threw them into their victory. Let the enemy throw you into, into your victory. Yeah. Don't worry about that. You know why? Because God is. And God will. They told Nebuchadnezzar what was going to happen, but he didn't listen. So, Nebuchadnezzar says, I see four men walking around. Now, I wonder what. Why would they want this walk in the fire? 
You know why? Because what you need to show people is that you don't affect my mood. They were up walking around after they had seen them go in bound. And they went into the fire and began to walk in the midst of the fire. It's okay to walk in the midst of the fire simply because God was with them. Nebuchadnezzar saw something that nobody else saw. The Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar looked, he says, I not only see three men, but I see four men up walking around, and one of them, I like that, he says, one of them looks like the Son of God. Now, the question that baffled me was, how did they know what the Son of God even looked like? He ain't even showing up on the scene yet. How did they even know what the Son of God looked like? Nobody had ever seen it at this point. He wasn't born yet. He was here, but he wasn't here. But what he says, it looks like. Now, you look like somebody that's a little blurry right now. But when I put these on, Oh, everything becomes clear. Yeah. See, that's how we got to do in this life. Because sometimes our, our, our God allows us to see things like this. God allows us to see things at, 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 a, at a level where we really don't know what it is. And we think it is one thing, but it comes out to be something else. But when we put our corrective lenses on, I love that. These, these are called corrective lenses. What are they correcting? They're correcting what you're seeing. Yeah. They're correcting your eyesight. They're correcting. So, so what you thought you saw, you really didn't see. So when you put them on, oh, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. That's victory. These boys experienced victory even before the victory was born. Oh, yeah. These boys experienced victory even in the face of death. These boys experienced victory. Even in the face of them being told to their faces that you're going to die if you don't do what I tell you to do. People tell you what they want to tell you, but you better not believe it. You know why? Because God is. And God will. They declare to themselves, they declare to Nebuchadnezzar, they declare to the world that God is. And God will. What will he do? He will deliver. What will he do? He will save. What will he do? He will heal. He will set free. It's okay. They try to bind you up. That's all right. That's all right. I tell my kids in the classroom all the time, it is not the end of the world, I promise you. That's another one of my saying. It ain't the end of the world. Listen, I also tell them every day I leave, I say tomorrow's a new day. That's another two I didn't have yet. Y'all don't see it a little bit. Tomorrow's a new day. Why do I tell them tomorrow's a new day? Because I try to pattern myself after God. Because what you did today, tomorrow God won't even remember. Mm -hmm. But you know who will? Mm -hmm. Those around you. Yeah. So my kids, they may, they're being children. They, they're kindergarten and first graders. I expect them to do what? Be children. They're going to do what they do. I don't expect them to make adult decisions. I don't expect them to behave when they have been taught how to behave in my classroom. So I have to teach them. I have to pattern myself. I have to do what I expect them to do. So I tell them, I say, listen, it's okay. Today you did this, but tomorrow, hey, it's a new day. We're going to start all the way up here. And that's what God does for us every single day of our lives. And if he does it for us, why can't we do it for others? Why are we holding grudges against one another? Why are we mad at, at both for 20, 30 years? For what? Is it going to change the situation? No. It has already happened. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego understood that I can't conform to what you want because what I got to do is bigger than what you want. Who I serve is bigger than what you want. And I can't live my life scared because of stuff that's happening. Listen, we gotta keep fighting. We gotta keep moving. Life doesn't stop because you get down. Life 
life doesn't stop because things happen. They're going to happen. But it's your reaction to life. I love the reaction to Shadrach, Meshach, Meshach, and Abednego simply because they did not stop believing what they believed. I'm not telling you what to believe. Hey, believe what you want to believe. It's not my job. A lot of my job, a lot of people think this what people are supposed to believe. You're supposed to believe this. You know what I mean? No, you believe what you want to believe. There was a story. I want y'all to go uh, watch it. I want you to read it or even watch the movie. Um, the little girl, um, I think it's the little girl that went to heaven. Um, she fell down in a tree. It's a movie. Awesome book. She fell down in, uh, in a hollow tree in a parent's yard, hit her head. Um, in the midst of the tree, it took them all day to get her out. But while she was in the tree, she went to talk to God. So she began to ask God all of these questions. God, God, why people like this and why people like that? And, you know, why, why, why do this and why do that? And, you know, they got her out of the tree. Uh, they thought she was dead. And, you know, the girl came out with a scratch here, maybe a scratch there, but she was unharmed. And, and, and people were just amazed at, at, at her coming out of this tree. And this was a big tree, and she fell a long way. And they were just amazed. But she went back to the church. And her mom began to tell a story how God saved her, how she went to talk to God. And the, the daughter told the mom what the conversation was with God. And God told me this, and God told me that. He said, I was going to go back with you. I'm going back home. He said, but when she told the church this, they began to shun her. Mm. You're lying. That didn't happen. Why are you telling us this? Why are you trying to trick us? So when the girl went back home and her mom began to cry, and she asked her, my mom, what's wrong? She said, she said baby, just people are just going to be how they are. I don't want you to worry about it. She told her mama, she said, they will get there when they get there. Yes, what does that mean? You can't make people get to a place that they're not designed and ready for. They will get there. When they get there, everybody don't have Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego faith yet. But when they get there, they will get there. I thought that was so powerful because the little girl had to encourage her mama to let her know they will get there. It's okay. So that's why I begin to say to myself, do as you please. Hey, if that's what you feel like you need to do, because I know the God. I serve the God that is, and I serve the God that will. So I want to encourage you today, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, whatever, whatever is on your shoulders, there's an altar right here. Every Sunday, listen, the week by week we go through something. Come and just take it off and lay it at the altar. Come, come lay it at the altar. Why? Because this is the place where your problems will be taken care of. The altar is not just here at the church. The altar can be by your bedside. The altar can be at your desk or at your job. The altar can be in the bathroom, and that's where you choose it to be. That's where the altar is. We think of the altar as this place right here. This is just a representation of what God really wants us to do in the world. He wants us to, to continue to lay our problems, our issues, all of them at the altar. Lay them there. But when you lay them there, don't pick them back up and take them back with you. Leave them there. Because what did Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do? They took their problem. What was their problem? <coughs> Death. And they laid it at the altar. Who did they give it to? They gave it to the one that can handle it. You can't do it. So I encourage you today. Lay your weight. Take that off your shoulder. It's too heavy for you. I'm an avid weightlifter. Listen, I, I, I got a goal. My goal is by December, by the end of December, that I'm going to be bench pressing 400, uh, maybe 405. I'm at 360 right now. I'm almost there. But you know when that weight gets heavy, what do I do? I punish. You know why? Because there's somebody behind me saying, you can do it. My God. There's somebody behind me saying, push, Neil. There's somebody behind me. They just got two fingers on the bar, but in my mind, them two fingers doing a whole lot, but then you can't lift a whole. You can't lift 360 pounds with two fingers, but them two fingers, this, this is, come on, Neil, you can keep doing it. That's how we got to be in life. 